Younger generations are in a very tough spot in the job market currently. If you've looked at graphs for junior developer positions, specifically on job sites like Indeed, you'll basically see that graph has just, <laughs> it's just tanked since 2022 around that. And so when we consider this primarily with, you know, Gen Alpha and very, uh, you know, early Gen Z, it's problematic because we're only just now seeing the very damaging psychological effects of generative AI, agentic AI, and all this AI, because never has there been a tool that has had such a profound impact on the way that we work and approach problem solving. And people pretend like this is going to be a seamless shift. Like we don't have to talk about it that much. We can just incorporate it into our normal workload and pretend it's business as normal when it's not. Because if you think about the capabilities that you have at your disposal, if I could pull up a site and generate code to do whatever it is, that effectively replaces now what a junior developer used to do. And not only has this raised the bar in terms of entry requirements just to get a junior developer job, but it's made it almost impossible to find one because so many jobs have been taken down because AI is now basically the filler for that role. And not only is this a fundamental shift, but it's so psychologically damaging for the younger generations that are in school studying to do this job because it, it, it simply, you know, it, it goes against what they were told, right? They were told that if, okay, if we go to school for four years and study this path, we're gonna come out with a technical degree. That might not be the case now because of tools like this. So not only is there not really a lot of incentive to stick with the same degree because there's not as much of a promise that you're going to get a job, but it, it, it completely has, has damaged how we go about thinking, right? Because if you're in school studying for four years to do this, and then all of a sudden this tool comes along midway through your, your, you know, your school, and now it's, it's questionable as to if, if you're even going to get a job, and all the stuff that you put in so much time and effort to learn now has just been replaced by one simple prompt. Because like I'm coming at it, right? Like I spend years and years studying this and I read a lot. And now this tool is coming in and basically doing all the stuff that I've read and studied to do. And it's it's hard for me to grasp that reality because I graduated in 2019 from college prior really to the introduction of all this stuff. And so I studied and I, I've, I read a lot of books and I've been doing this, I've been doing software engineering for the past six years and I'm still trying to truly comprehend what this means. Because for me, this tool can basically tell you anything in, in, for, as far as software engineering, but that didn't used to exist. And so for me, it's hard because not only does it put in jeopardy all the time and effort that I put into learning this, and but I'm already in doing this, but I couldn't imagine the burden it's placing on people that are in school that are approaching this career because it's it's just wild because it never has before has there been a transformation like this. Obviously not in my lifetime. Obviously people are going to say, you know, there's been transformations like this in each generation. But this one is the biggest unknown because it's so it's still very much in its infancy. And it's still growing exponentially. And just the, again, I've talked about this, but just the marketing aspect around it is just taking it to the whole nother level, right? Because what they're, what we're being told is that, you know, this tool is changing how we do school, how we approach problem solving, how we approach code, and how we approach life in general. But to the point where it's damaging our minds because we're not able to think we're not able to truly problem solve and we're not able to truly understand things because all of a sudden we've created this new knee-jerk reaction to go look it up and give it a prompt and get an immediate response and submit that right that's only good when it works right because we've talked about the code you know it'll get you about 80 percent of the way there but you still are on the hook for the last 20 percent but also you're on the hook for the debugging portion of this. If you don't have a true and complete functional understanding of the code base, when a problem arises, 
you're going to be in a real tough spot because not only do you then have to go and learn the entire code base, but you have to then on the fly understand the logic and piece that together in your mind to be able to fix the problem. Whereas prior to the introduction of generative AI, you still you had to learn the code base because you had to contribute to it and you were the sole contributor, right? You could ask people questions, you could look things up on Stack Overflow and other you know, various sources like that, but nothing to the extreme of what we have now. And I fear that lines of code generated by these tools is being equated to quality in a sense, right? Because as much as we don't want to say, I think a lot of people hold developers to the standard of how many lines of code that they write, when in reality, that couldn't be farther from the truth. It doesn't matter how many co lines of code that you write. You may not even write code for two weeks because you're trying to uh, troubleshoot something in production. You're trying to fix a bug and you're trying to read through code. You're doing research, you're prototyping. So a lot of our work doesn't directly translate into outputted lines of code. Yet the standard by which generative AI is, is looked at in terms of quality is how many lines of code it can output. Do you see the discrepancy here? And so it's it's going to fundamentally change how departments view developers because their new standard is going to be the output of generative AI. And that's the thing that I'm coming at it with. That's the approach to how I'm looking at it. And that's how I'm trying to understand this new reality that I'm in, that I've entered into as well. And the burden that it must place on younger people, just I, I can't even begin to imagine because it, it effectively is going to basically nullify all four years of school. And it's, at me. so what are you going to study this for four years, spend a ton of money and maybe get a job, like get a job. It's, it's just wild out there. And, and I, to be honest, I just don't even know what to think. I've tried to square with it a couple times and I've tried to be like, okay, you know, it's fine. You can, incorporated as a tool into your workflow but you know for the most part you can act like it's business as normal i i'm i'm beginning to shift away from that mentality and i'm beginning to shift more towards i honestly just accepting the new reality and i it's it's kind of freaks me out because you know i just don't know what to think and you know, I have my thoughts about agile development. I'm not the biggest fan of agile simply because I don't think it's in the developer's interest. But my fear is that AI is going to be coupled with agile practices, and that's going to really make it difficult for developers to truly build things properly. When I say properly, I don't mean quickly. I think quickly is often just thrown out there as like, you know, we have to build things fast and, you know, quick is equal to good. I don't think that that's true, right? Because if you build something quick, that may work in some use cases, but other things take a lot of time. And sometimes time just does not fit in neatly and nicely into an agile framework. Sometimes you just can't break up something into a three or five point story as much as you want to sometimes you just can't and the temptation and the reason that i don't like agile is i've seen too many times when something is too large to fit into a three or five point story it, it just it either uh gets broken up but it, it but always what happens is that the second part of that somehow just goes away and it somehow scales itself down to fit into a three or five. So I think it, it really messes with the, the true, like the true amount of time it takes to do things. I think we always try to wedge things in to fit that nice sprint when sometimes it just doesn't work like that. How many times do you have to go and read and research and prototype? How do you, gauge that time. If you try to time box yourself in every detail of your life, you're not going to allow yourself to truly innovate. And I get that, you know, you're faced in deadlines and you have all that stuff. But what I'm trying to say as is as a developer, 
I don't think that agile practices enable us to truly innovate. It feels like to me, now this is my opinion, it feels like to me a lot of products were built before or outside of the agile framework <clears throat> and then these products get picked up and then agile gets tacked onto it and then features fit nicely into the agile framework but the actual core assembly and building of the core product i don't think that that squares in an agile framework be simply because time Time gets obfuscated in this crazy framework we call Agile. You might hear it called Safe. You might hear it called all these crazy things. I just don't think it's that developer friendly. I've read books about it. I've read articles about it. I've tried to understand it. And the closest that I understand it to truly work at its purest definition is by only doing test-driven development and having that lead the creation of user stories. But the problem with that is, have you ever tried to do test-driven development in its truest sense when you're building a completely new product? It's very difficult, and it slows things down a lot because it's so hard to truly get right. And so if we start blending in AI into that, I just don't know where we're where we're trying to head. Are we trying to get faster? Are we trying to speed up the agile process? Are we trying to what what what's our what's our end goal? The end goal is the part that freaks me out, right? Because how much quicker can we get as a society, as a people? We already move at a pretty fast pace. And are we telling the new are we telling new grads and people in college that they need to move faster and innovate more? We're going to turn into like the meme where it's like, oh, yeah, I've built 50 startups and I've made 35, you know, side projects. But, uh, you know, that's not good enough anymore. You know, you should have won faster. That's where we're headed, right? Generative AI. I'm just going to list on my resume that I generated a billion lines of code. Is that what people are looking for? I don't know. And that's the hard thing that I'm trying to figure out myself. Part of the reason I'm making these videos is that I can process verbally and try to understand the reality that we all are finding ourselves in, whether we had a voice in the fact that we want it this way or not, but this is where we are finding ourselves. And so it's interesting times to say the least. Um, keep studying, <laughs> you know, finish your degree, uh, and let's hope that the job market, something, something improves. Uh, at this point, um, I don't know. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.